box was heavy. Did y'all check it out yet? Basically what we're gonna do right now, we've got the box in the car, and I don't know if you noticed it, we had to take the door off to get it in. We were kind of torn between building the enclosure inside the car, building it outside the car. Fortunately, we did specs on the box and realized we could push it through if the door wasn't there. So we decided to take the door off. When you build an enclosure outside of a car, it gives you ample opportunity to do a little bit better upholstery job on all the parts and whatnot. So when you're in a vehicle and you're building and assembling an enclosure inside of a vehicle, it's such a confined space, you don't have room to really do anything. And some of your work could suffer based on having no space to function. What we've got is we've got a color match stage in here. The stage is anchored to the floor as best as possible. It's real sturdy. Um, what's gonna happen is box obviously sits on top of that. Box is gonna get anchored down internally, so that way the box doesn't do all this crazy wobbling stuff. It's pretty heavy on its own, but having said that, just in case he gets in a little fender bender or much even worse, an accident, something along those lines, at least he's protected, the box is going nowhere. So what's gonna happen next? Aaron's already got the wires inside the box. So, yeah. there you go. Positive and negative wire. So technically, what we've got to do now is load the subwoofers in. Let's go get those bad boys. All right. Hey, what's up? He's dead now. So, what we've got to do now is get those two subs in that box without destroying them, without scratching them, without putting a nick in the paint, without doing anything wrong, without having any mistakes. And I'm terrified, but we got to do it. So, here goes nothing. So let me know when you're ready for a sub. It'll fit that way, it'll just be really awkward. It's up to you. Reaching over is not gonna be very fun, but I mean, you're trying to, yeah, cerebral palsy grab. I had to get a picture real quick. What we've got going on right now is, since it's a single voice coil sub, you've got one positive connection, one negative connection. The position he's got it in right now has a negative connection on top, the positive one he had to put in blind. Luckily, I had a bird's eye view and I saw it go right through, so. One down. Five left. Four left. Like a stroker at a box. <laughs> I'm just saying. Hi. How's everyone doing? What are we covering today? I'm trying to get this sucker playing. I see the door's already blown out. <laughs> so we got uh, Aaron making a few wiring adjustments back here. We're going to do testing and tuning for a little bit. We don't like to start ripping into a brand new subwoofer, especially something of that caliber without a proper break in, but we do have to deliver this car here pretty quick. So we've got to keep the batteries on charge, make sure we constantly have power going to them. And then we got to play on them, loosen the suspension up a little bit, get them doing some damage. Charge the batteries? I feel like a mad scientist every time I'm with this. What do I plug this to? You ready for this? I'm ready. I've been waiting for 20 years. 20 years. Since the last time you blew one up. I didn't even blow it up. I mean, went through it with a with a drill. Electric drill. 2,500 RPM just blah, all through the coast. Electric as in like the one you plug into plug the, in the wall. Yep. No variable speed. It's either on full <clears> tilt. <throat> yeah. I destroyed my own shit, so we had to stay very, very careful on these. 20 years from Stroker so. Prison. Wow, can you get anything wrong today? <laughs> Shop's gonna burn down. <laughs> Right now, basically what we're doing is putting the hinge bolts back on. We're gonna make sure these get threaded in the right way. If they get stripped, then we've messed this man's door up. All in the name of base. Sounds cool, but. Now it's easy to take this door off. Power windows and power locks inside here, they're connected via this harness. 
Harness comes out of the B pillar and goes into the door with a simple connection. Harness assembly ducks back inside the car and then we put the boot back in. The boot's always the hardest part because it's rubber and it wants to be a butthole. I'm dirty. So as soon as Aaron gets finished up tightening that door on, we're gonna hop in there and play a series of test tones like I was saying earlier. Probably start off with some lower frequencies just to kind of see what the low end of the enclosure is capable of in terms of volume and clarity. And then we'll move our way slowly up to the ceiling of roughly which the box is capable of handling without causing any type of problems. Hold up, bro. I think, I think they chipping. Hold up. This damn stroker bill's got me a little messed up right now. It's been a long day around here. Let's just leave it like that. Ooh, he's stealing! Oh, he's stealing! He's stealing! Hey, just go over here. Come on. So I got a confession. Man, if you don't get up my shit! I got a little bit of a confession. Here's what happened. Okay, fuck it. Aaron, come on. You want to be in a damn thing? So here's what we did. That's a 5,000 watt amp in that trunk. My dumb ass clamped about 1,800 watts out of it. That's embarrassing. Not only for me, but for DB Drive. They made the damn thing. Well, guess what? One of the wires came off the subs. So here's my dumb ass. I'm calling Serwin Vega. I'm on the phone talking about, man, I got a film crew out here. I'm raising hell at Serwin Vega. They're like, we don't know what the hell is wrong. You did the box right. I don't understand what's going on. I'm like, I don't know, fucking help me because I got guys here filming this shit. So I got a two ohm load on this amp. We got an amp that's rated at 5,000 watts at one ohm at two ohm. It ain't gonna do shit. And it damn sure didn't do shit. So we uh, decided to uh, redesign the box because apparently this is the worst box I've ever built in my life. Turns out it was probably one of the better ones I've ever built in my life, or actually Aaron. My specs though. But, uh, so yeah, when you hook up the other coil, that's two two ohm coils parallel down to one ohm. Then the amp starts to do what it's supposed to do, and I kind of look like a jackass. But shit happens, y'all. It's all hooked up now, and it's tuned. So I'm gonna finish this cigarette so I can stop with the shakes. See now, that's you. fine. That's that's about 1.5 rice. Okay, that's fine. I expected that. If they made them in dual ones, though, that'd be awesome. You hear that, sir, when they go, dual ones. We like that half ohm shit. You take two of them, wind them together, half ohm. So you start off 6,000 watts on a 5,000 watt amp. And if box rise goes back down to one ohm, you're still making your 5K, I got 2,500 watts of sub. Right now, it looks like I've got about 250 over RMS to each sub. So that's about 1850 a hit. They rated at 1600. So when Vega says they put 3,000 watts on them for 24 hours, free air. That ain't bad. Wayne, damn, man. All righty, you wanna bless me with a burp? Pretty please. So what we're gonna do right now, we're gonna go ahead and shut the trunk, we're gonna shut all the doors. Since this is gonna be a competition car, we gotta be mindful of the competition circuit that Elvis is gonna run the vehicle in, which is US Auto Sound Competition International. That's the governing body that runs pretty much all of Texas. So if you're competing, you're competing in the USACI lanes. There's some little tricks that USACI lets you get away with when you're meeting your car in the lanes, and those are some of the things we're gonna do now. Scooting the seat up, flipping some visors down, little tricks inside the cabin to help boost score a little bit. All legal. Let's get started. So typically what we do is we meter what's called outlaw for the most part. Take this microphone and you put it in the kick panel on the passenger side of the vehicle. Sometimes it works better in the driver's side, like in Chevy Tahoe, Suburbans, and stuff like that. We're going to take it. We're going to put it right down here. We're not going to use the glow. We're just going to toss it in here. We're going to slide the seat all the way forward, tilt this seat all the way forward. Aaron's going to put his titties in a defrost vent. He's got to scoot his seat forward too. So he's got the seat already done. It's leaned up, upright, as best as he can stand it 
kind of an awkward position, but when you need every last tenth of a decibel out of your car, you do what's necessary. So this side's finished up. I'm gonna go ahead and close the door. I know these cars pretty well. They meter the loudest when the meter is in the passenger kick panel. So we're gonna go ahead and get that door closed. Got this door bolted back up. And we got Aaron kissing the windshield. Y'all don't try this at the house. Try that shit at Sound Evolution though. Let's go to the meter and see what we're doing. Found out during tuning and testing that the vehicle peaks at 47 Hertz, which is pretty pimp because everybody's talking all this, oh, it's a burp luffer, it's a burp luffer. Well, I mean, that's what we're doing. But it plays lows pretty damn well. So right now, we are tuned. We're gonna play as loud as we can with absolutely zero distortion whatsoever. When we throw some distortion in the mix and up that volume on the radio just a little bit, we're gonna get more power out of the amp. We're gonna get louder, but I'm not trying to abuse a brand new sub, especially one that costs a thousand dollars. So, whenever you're ready, Aaron. And just like that, we broke 150 decibels inside of a car with uh, two mid-range drivers. God, they're so stupid. 51.06, good enough. Can you only imagine if we had a little more power, Elvis? Just a little more power. <laughs> hey guys, thanks for hanging out with us today. It's really late in the day so far, but we finished it, and we finished it a day early. Elvis is gonna love the news. The new Sermon Vegas Stroker Pro Classics are totally jamming in this car. We're busted 151 on the term lab. That's absolutely amazing. That DD yeah. Drive A7's putting in work. Aaron's still a pain in my ass, but I love him to death. Catch it when Elvis comes back by. He's going to be totally amazed and floored with what he hears. We've got a surprise for you, buddy. I'm so freaking exhausted. Elvis is going to be here pretty soon. Is he? Yeah. The customer for the blue truck is here. Are heading this way as well. Okay. So, hopefully... I think next time maybe you don't book so many freaking lifesaver appointments all at once. I've already got enough going on. i got James's it's car. i got the state. It's for the state. I can't turn him down. Can't turn them down at all. You're getting a little tired. That's all. You got to worry about Casey's truck. Yeah, that needs to be done by this weekend. Like, no excuses. So you're gonna help. There's 16 freaking subwoofers out there. Out there. Those shits are heavy. 16, 16. I don't care. It needs to be done. You're gonna help. I'll be there. I'm there. Right after all the lifesaver episodes. You, need, you can't even work a simple calendar. I mean, how hard is it? You have a 10, you have an 11, you have a 12, you have a 1. You don't have a 10, a 1002, a 1006, a 1009, and they all take 20 minutes apiece. It all depends on how they drive. They drive for two hours every day. What does that they have to do with appointment scheduling? Hey, I think that's Elvis. Is it? Yeah. He yeah, that's him for sure. I'm gonna go meet with him. Shit, he's already here. Uh, What's up, Paul? How you doing? I'm gonna see you, my friend. Hey, How are you? You ready? Yes, sir. Yeah, I'm ready. I'm excited. I don't know if he's ready. Woo -hoo -hoo. Nice. So that's what we got. We got the box in there. The box is anchored down. Hold on, before you get in, check this out. Everything's bracketed down. Eventually, we'll go ahead and wing it off and put a roof on it, and we'll totally wall the car. You're gonna want to wall the car because the entire back of the roof is moving a good inch, inch and a half. Okay. Um, real quick, pop the trunk. I want to show you what's in the trunk. Da, 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 da. All right. Nice. So we've got your Fosgate 4 channel mounted on top here. Everything old school style. Uh, wires are all tucked real nice and neat up underneath here. Your 5K is mounted right here. It's got tons of breathing room. Uh, everything's wired in. Fuses are right back here. Uh, we used 100% full oxygen-free copper wire on this entire project. All your wires have been upgraded. Batteries are fully installed, but they're all hidden. They're back behind here. It's pretty maintenance free, but it's easy to get to when it comes to charging, okay? Okay. So basically, that's what you got, like what you wanted. Turn it up. Stroker of 1990, that's for sure. Them some bad mother 
some bad subwoofers. Put another 5K on there. The strokers can handle. But it's, it's only 1,600 watts. Well, it's all over. Project Corolla's finished. The strokers are banging, pushed by one of the baddest amps on the planet from DB Drive. Want to thank you, Elvis, for giving us the opportunity to work on that car. I think it turned out awesome. What do you think? I love it, man. Cool, it's cool. It's the loudest system that I ever had. Are you serious? Yes, sir. Wow, awesome. Cool. Well, that'll work. Thanks, guys, for tuning in to Car Audio Dynasty. Make sure you click like and subscribe below, and don't miss out on the notifications of our next videos coming up. And check us out also at Sound Evolution HTX on Instagram and Facebook. See you next time.